navigate a downpour to bring home maximum points. All right, guys, so here we are doing some scenario mode on F1 2014. Today I'll be tackling all five uh, scenarios on the preview build. However, I'm not too sure how many there's going to be on the full game. We'll have to wait and see. So let's get into the first scenario. Well, this downpour wasn't forecast and it's taken the teams by surprise. The drivers will all have to pit for full wet tyres now. But who will we see capitalising on this sudden change to bring home a win? All right then, so we're in Malaysia. We're driving as Sebastian Vettel in the Red Bull. But uh, the tricky thing is here, we're going to have to stay out on intermediate tyres on a full wet track compared to the AI who get to go into the pits. Put on a set of wet tyres. We'll have track position, but the rear traction is going to be absolutely horrendous. So it's only going to get worse and worse, I presume, as we go on uh, further on into this race. We've got Fernando Alonso uh, leading the race so far, just coming into the pits now for his... Uh, set of wet tires and just to clarify I'm running with no assists on this game uh, So that's no traction control manual gears no steering assist uh, no brake or pit assist either so it's uh, Completely aids off so it's gonna be very tricky indeed. I'm using the wheel ma uh, the Fanatec CSR as well, so um, It's gonna be very interesting to see how this all plays out. I'm also running on the hardest difficulty as well so this should be uh, an absolute nightmare to contest with a wet track, intermediate conditions. We can see Alonso about three or four corners after he's already stopped. He's already caught up to the back of us. Made up five seconds in just one sector. And unfortunately, we just can't fight with Alonso at all. It's just not even a competition at the moment. But uh, basically what we've got to do now is just try and minimize those uh, wheel spin off the exit of corners. Use higher gears as much as we can. Uh, if you guys don't know already, then... This game is very, very tough to drive in terms of the rear traction in the dry with no assists, uh, let alone the wet. It's an absolute nightmare. And when you consider this is only my first day on the game, it's uh, it pretty much a recipe for disaster. So I'm just trying to minimize those wheel spin uh, revs as much as I can, putting the car down into lean. Uh, that's how you sort of minimize uh, the wheel spin on the Exeter corners by putting the fuel map down. And uh, we can see I'm still getting wheel spin even up into 5th gear. I can't even go full throttle until I get to 6th gear. It's it's pretty crazy. So I'm um, only running standard on the straights and I'm running lean everywhere else just to minimize that wheel spin. It looks like I'm slowly picking up my lap times as I get used to the track and the conditions. And I think, in all honesty, I think the track is actually starting to dry out ever so slightly. But still, the cars behind me were catching me massively. Seconds per lap, uh, I think... Uh, they won't be able to challenge us as we come into the final corner now. We've got Fernando Alonso who's already won this race. He was 20 or 30 seconds up the road over a thousand meters in front of us as you can see on the graphic. But uh, yeah, coming across the line for our first scenario mode of F1 2014, we've come home and finished second in intermediate conditions. A surprising change in the weather caused chaos out on the track. One who suffered most was Red Bull's leading driver, who lost out on first after failing to adapt to the worsening conditions. What? I failed to adapt to the... Are you kidding me? The team didn't want to let me go on for wet tight. That's, that's a joke. The team failed to adapt to a better strategy, if I'm honest. Hold on to 8th place with a damaged front wing. A part of the Sauber front wing has just come flying off. They can't afford to pit for repairs though, and it's going to be a real test of driving skill if they're going to hang on to eighth. Alright, so second scenario, this time we're in a Sauber in the points, so that already tells me this is completely unrealistic, uh, let alone the fact that Grosjean is chasing us down. We've got no front wing or part of a front wing to contest with, but Team Radio. Right, there's damage to your front wing. There's a significant loss to down calls, but we cannot afford to bring you in. We absolutely need you to finish in eighth today. Do what you can. All right, so I've been given this Salva with a little bit of a disability here. We've got to take it all the way to the points in eighth place. Uh, something Salva has not done this year, so it's going to be very interesting. Actually going purple on this lap, so screw logic. We're going fastest in a Salva with... Uh, a partly broken front wing now cutting to the final lap. I've just been stroking the car along uh, Just trying to put in the best laps I can it's been fairly difficult to just hit apexes with this car Especially at high speed. I'm not too sure if it's the handling model this year Or if it's just the salver with its damaged front wing 
uh, just having lots of understeer. Hard to hit some apexes, you'll see, over the course of this lap, even through this slow corner here. The rear end sliding out, the front end doesn't want to grip up. It's a little bit of a nightmare, but nothing compared to the previous race, race we just had. Losing the rear end there through that corner, which is normally flat, but as you can see, the difficulty here is uh, quite uh, tough to contend with as the tyre wear is also starting uh, to go off here on the final lap of the race. Hungary is always a bit of a nightmare in terms of tyre wear. I can't wait to drive this track in a 100% race, uh, but uh, we'll leave that to another day. Either way, we've got Grosjean now chasing us down through this uh, final lap, final sector we're coming up to, and uh, we should be able to keep him behind, to be honest. Lewis Hamilton wins the race. Hungary is a very tough track to overtake. It's pretty much Monaco without the wall, so we should, as we lose the rear end there, be able to keep him behind, cutting to the cinematic view. We can see Grosjean right behind us, waiting for a mistake to happen. Coming up to the penultimate corner now, shift down to second gear. I'm not using first gear through any of the corners on this game so far, but coming through the final corner, we're going defensive slightly. We've missed the apex, and Grosjean pretty much pushing us there through the final corner, but we've just finished ahead of Grosjean in a nail-biter of a race to finish in eighth place. I just can't imagine how tough it was for the Sauber driver out there today. Losing positions when the car has little downfalls is to be expected, but they gave it an almighty effort and didn't drop a single place. An inspiring performance. Stay ahead of the drivers on slick tyres. No, not another one of these. Sauber are being very brave here. They're going to try to finish the race on their intermediate tyres while the rest of the cars around them change to slicks. It's a bold strategy. I'm not entirely sure they can make it work. Can we stop with the bold strategies, please? I just want a straightforward race. This time, we're going to have to stay out on intermediate tyres as the track continues to get uh, more and more dry. Uh, initially, for the first lap or two, I think I will have some decent pace as everyone pulls into the pits now. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. There's a massive pit stop delta uh, in this race at Silverstone. We faked to go into the pits because I really wanted to. I don't know why this game is trying to punish me by putting me on uh, almost, you know, when, you, when you're on the wrong tire, the wrong compound of tire, it's like driving on ice, like Bambi on ice or something like that. Um, we rejoin in second. The very next lap, we can see one of the leaders coming in for their stops. I believe it's Hamilton, but there's also a lap car in the way. So I think if I would have done this over again, I think I might have been able to jump Hamilton because, to be honest though, for the first lap or two, I was actually pretty slow. And if I would have, you know, had another go, I probably would have gained that extra second just by being used to the conditions, I suppose. But either way, we're going to continue on in second place. We've got Sebastian Vettel. Uh, in fourth. He's the sort of benchmark we need to beat as we cut to 48. We can see Hamilton getting held up by Marcus Ericsson massively. And again, if I was just a little bit faster, I maybe might have been able to capitalize on that uh, little moment there from Hamilton. But uh, there's only a couple laps left. I'm slowly getting slower as the track continues to dry out. And uh, I don't know why the game wants me to, to stay out on intermediate tires as we get blocked there by Bianchi. It's absolutely stupid. I don't know anyone in their right mind who would stay out on a dry track with intermediate tyres. It's a bit of a joke. But either way, one lap to go, or two laps to go rather, and uh, we're maintaining our position fairly nicely. I don't know how, but somehow the tyre temperatures have maintained you know, a, a relatively decent sort of temperature, so they're not massively overheating. But in saying that, I've been losing the back end quite massively over the course of uh, most of the corners. But you know, I haven't been leaking like 10, 20 seconds a lap like you probably normally would on F1 2013. But in a way, I think this is good. You probably would be able to stay out this long on intermediate tyres, but in saying that, you're still going to lose a lot of time. But we still finish in second place, though. Fairly decent result, and I believe that's another gold medal for us in the Scenario Mode Challenge. As the track started to dry, teams entered the pits to switch onto the slick tyres. One team that defied this was Sauber, whose driver used sheer will to not only keep the car on the track, but to take it onto the podium. Yep, so that's uh, another scenario mode done and dusted. I believe you've got two more after this. Finishing on the podium for Sauber, I believe the guys over that team will be absolutely ecstatic after that result. But uh, moving on to the next one, I believe we're in a Ferrari at uh, Singapore, so it's going to be uh, fairly interesting. And finally, we'll actually be able to attack some cars. So. 
Let's move on to the next scenario. Use a strong grid start to grab a podium finish. It was a disappointing qualifying for Ferrari yesterday, but if there's one thing we've seen from them in the past, it's how electrifying their race starts can be. The opening corners could be the decisive factor for them today. All right, so here we go. In Singapore, in a Ferrari, finally we'll be able to go on the attack. We need to finish on the podium at least, but uh, I'll be aiming to try and win this race as well. We're on super soft tyres, but it looks like the majority of the field are on softs, which is the yellow wall tyres, so that might make things a little bit easier. We'll see if everyone has the super softs. You can see Vettel and Alonso had uh, super softs as well. We go up the inside of Hamilton there, almost undercutting him, but he's got superior traction there, having a much more flowing run through the third corner, I want to say it is. But uh, we'll try and see if we can pass Hamilton, see if, if we can uh, really stand up to a Mercedes in a Ferrari. Uh, we do, of course, have the faster compound, and in real life, uh, Ferrari was actually really good on their super soft tyres around Singapore, arguably faster than Mercedes, but with the race tyre, I believe Mercedes were just that little bit too quick, so it's going to be interesting to see how Codemasters have sort of uh, replicated this into their game, but uh, so far we're sticking with Hamilton. The gap is about a second, uh, according to the graphic there, it's around 40-50 metres as it extends as we go on straights, but it's a bit of an elastic band gap when you measure it in metres, but either way, coming through this uh, chicane here up to the uh, the hairpin now we might try and go up the inside of Hamilton here but no he shuts the door he's a little bit too far forward uh, for us to dive bomb him from that back that far back but uh, we'll try and stick with him in the slipstream I believe we do have the pace to stay with him we definitely will finish on the podium on our current pace uh, judging by this first lap it looks like we should be able to maintain that position it's also very hard to overtake on on Singapore so I don't believe the AI will be able to get in front of us but in saying that, there's five laps. Tire wear might be a factor, we'll have to wait and see, but um, it's just a question of looking after that, those rear tires, making sure those um, temperatures don't exceed too high. And I think that the um, some of the curves around this track have sort of been reprofiled, like they've been smoothened out a little bit. That's just what it looks like to me. Driving over those some of those curves, they weren't as bad as what they were previously on F1 2013, but we're going round the outside of Hamilton into turn one. He goes defensive, broke it early, because he was stuck on that sort of compromised line on the inside. We take the lead of the race, and after that, we just didn't see Hamilton at all. But here we go, coming on to the fourth lap now. This is going to be my fastest lap of the Grand Prix. For this one, though, I'm just going to let you guys enjoy this hot lap with the raw game sounds. So there we have a hot lap of Singapore. I really enjoyed driving this track compared to previous games like F1 2012 and 2013. I feel like it's a little bit more flowing. And also the brakes on this game seem like they're a little bit more stronger in terms of stopping power, which has made this track a lot more enjoyable to drive. But uh, coming home, 30 seconds clear of the nearest car behind and a very dominant race indeed. 
An incredible start from the Ferrari saw their driver launch themselves into a fighting position. A strong early performance allowed them to finish today's race in the podium places. Take the win after starting in 17th. With the rain clearing, it looks like the Ferrari driver is taking a chance and fitting the dry tyres. He promised a performance today, and if this comes together, he stands a great chance of delivering just that. Alright, so here we are for the final scenario of this video, and also this preview. We're in Suzuka, starting on dry tyres. We're going to be pretty slow at the start, so I'm going to put on the revs to lean, so I can minimise that wheel spin, but to be honest, I think it's going to be pretty bad, and yeah, just losing positions off this first... Uh, start and we'll probably be last as we head into turn one we'll see if we can pick off a few positions as well for this first lap or two I think it's going to be uh, in favor of the AI but then as the race goes on we're gonna have the superior tire we won't need to make a pit stop I believe the AI will be coming in for a set of dry tires so we'll need to carve through the field as quickly as we can make sure that the two Mercedes uh, don't get too far ahead of us um, that they don't you know have a pit stop lead advantage over us so that's the aim for this race try and cut through the field as much as we can defend our position and uh, see how we go so far through this first sector you know it's relatively wet I'd want to say I'm about two to three seconds slower than the AI just through this sector alone but we're just using track position to sort of keep them behind but uh, we'll see as we head into the second and third sector just how wet those portions of the track are I believe F1 2014 still has the localized weather so there are certain uh, sectors of the track that can be wetter than others, so it could be advantage dry tyres or it could be advantage wet tyres so far. But on lap three, we've actually started to move forward now. The track is now starting to come up to us, or come to us, rather, as the temperatures come up. Lap, the end of lap three now, we've pulled up to the back of, uh, I want to say it's a Williams? Yeah, it's Bottas. Bottas, well down the order as we got the inside. He got held up by Sergio Perez. And uh, Grosjean there, sort of the cork in the bottle there in his Lotus in 13th place, maintaining uh, some decent track positions so far. But now we'll be pretty much going on the attack. It's almost uh, dry conditions. I can't see any wet patches on the track, so I'd have to say that the AI will be coming in for their set of dry tyres very soon, possibly on the next lap. We'll have to wait and see as we got the inside of Perez there into the fast uh, right-hander. And uh, now... We've caught up to the back of Grosjean finally. He's braking slowly, coming into this hairpin. And, uh, yeah, the AI clearly struggling now. I believe they might be coming in at the end of this lap. So it's going to be interesting to see how we end up as some of the leaders pit if they've already gained that pit stop advantage over us in terms of time. It looks like, is it Hamilton, the race leader? It looks like he's about 10, maybe 12 seconds in front of us. So it might be fairly close in terms of track position so we'll need to push on this lap and possibly the next one uh, depending on when the leaders stop but now we're in the slipstream of Daniel Kvyat coming up to 130R we've easily cleared him we've just got superior traction at the moment so Till going slowly through 130R having to brake shift down the sixth gear but uh, we'll go up the inside coming into this final chicane into P11 we're almost in the points now as we can see some of the midfield runners coming in for their stops. I believe everyone will be coming into the pits uh, for their set of dry tyres now. Otherwise, they'll be losing maybe 20 seconds on this next lap. I think this is probably the, the transition phase into dry tyres now as we cut to lap 7. Continually getting faster as the track con uh, you know, continually gets drier and drier. And for some reason, the AI just didn't have the pace in the dryer. I just kept on streaking away like I did in Singapore in the previous scenario just constantly getting faster so I don't think the difficulty is on legend AI it's what codemasters say is hard so probably not the hardest of hard scenarios in the end but we almost lapped Jules Bianchi as we come across the line bit of wheel spin on exit and uh, come home to win another race and another gold medal for our scenario mode challenge It would have taken a completely flawless driver for the Ferrari to finish first today, and that's exactly what we witnessed. Starting way back in 17th, an absolute refusal to abide by expectations saw him fight his way up the grid, car after car. So that's been this video for today, guys. I hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to see more F1 2014 videos in the future. I'll be definitely covering this game uh, quite a lot in the coming months. 
Uh, also, like the video if you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions as to what videos I should make in the future, then let me know. I've still got this preview build, so I'll be continuing to upload these videos until the official release of the game in just a couple of weeks. But until my next video, I'll see you next time.